for listening to the unscripted dreams podcast with joe and marcus if you have any questions or comments please feel free to email us at unscripted dreams at gmail.com if you're interested in listening to exclusive content that includes bonus episodes and our hindsight video series please join us on patreon at the unscripted dreams podcast if you're listening to our podcast on youtube you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. Thank you. Yo, as we know, life is full of surprises, both good and bad. The day-to-day journey is full of unforeseen obstacles, and sometimes it's hard to see our way through. Beyond the norm and mundane are where unscripted dreams live. Join us for thought-provoking discussions and interviews to help us navigate through the fog and create our own path. We are the Unscripted Dream Podcast, operating outside the margins to motivate and inspire our audience. So today's uh, episode is get around the concept of time. So when you think of the concept of time, time after time, you know, time literally is your friend and not your friend at the same time. So when you think of time in a positive light, history repeats itself and you can learn from that to help you progress forward. But when you think about the other hand of time, Unfortunately, you can't get it back once it's gone. True. Very true. So at the time, you know, it's, as I've gotten older, you know, I just realized that it's, it's <laughs> you know, it's really a finite resource. I've mentioned that before. And it's something that you have to be really mindful of. Or, I mean, you know how you hear just saying, you know, time flies when you're having fun. Sometimes time flies when you're miserable too, <laughs> and you just and it just catches up to you, and you you look down for a minute and you look up and maybe a few months have went by, or maybe a few years, and you're wondering what did you do with all that time that you had that could you know that depending on your perspective you might feel it's been wasted. So, and and I'm glad you said that because when you when I think of time being wasted. The immediate thing that comes to mind to me is regrets. What do you regret for you to feel like your time is wasted? And I feel like a lot of people don't address that properly. Like when you talk about you feel like your time is wasted, what do you regret? Did you have a lot of things on the table and you decide not to eat, so to speak? Or did somebody put you through the ringer or something put you through the ringer like you had a really bad experience with something and you felt like it was a waste of time because i'm here to tell you that no time is a waste of time it may not be utilized in the manner you want it to be used but there's no such thing as time being wasted I don't know about that, Joe. I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you might feel like you're less productive, but what I'm saying is sometimes you need to feel that need or feel, you know, understand the concept of you actually having your time wasted to understand what you need to do to progress forward, make you more productive. If I didn't have that down period where I felt like I wasted my time, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, yeah, I understand that, but... <laughs> Now that makes sense. Now yeah, the delivery at first sounded kind of ridiculous, right? Nah, man, like I'm not on no ancient aliens type philosophy or nothing, you know? <laughs> what I'm saying is there's a reason why you went through these down periods and you had these bad experiences is so that you could be so much greater going forward. All right, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Y'all just thinking about all the situations. I mean, I had a situation that happened yesterday <laughs> where, I mean, my time was, my time was wasted. And I wasn't too happy about it, but, but, uh, you know, from that, I learned that now there's a certain way I need to interact with the individual so I can avoid getting in a situation where I let them waste my time. 
So I learned from it. I mean, they definitely wasted, uh, definitely pulled about 30 to 45 minutes away from me. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't pleased with that, but now I kind of know what to, you know, now I know what to do moving forward. So this is a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a learning moment for me, but so Joe, let me break this scenario down. It's kind of piggyback backs off to like the power of negativity a little bit, but not so, but, uh, so one thing with, with time is it's important to, you know, understand that it's like, it's your time, it's your time, you know, and. You know, you have to pick and choose in some situations and you kind of you have to be smart about the uh, the consequences of picking and choosing certain battles that pertain to your time and just really understanding how to interact with people. I'm just going to give give you a scenario. Um, so, you know, you're working a job, right, and working somewhere where they just can't quite get the staffing right. And you're responsible. You, you find yourself being one of the most responsible people that's actually working there. And you work with a lot of unreliable people. And, you know, there's a lot of call-offs, a lot of call-offs. And it gets frustrating for you because think about it. When you're working and you're short-staffed, you work with people that are unreliable, you find yourself doing more. You also find yourself having to stay late because other people are pulling their end or there's, you know, people, you're short-staffed. I mean, it's, if you're working in anything that's high traffic retail, any kind of service or hospitality work like that, this probably happens quite often. You know, on your day off, you know, you want this day off, you work. I mean, you earned it putting your time in with these folks and your manager calls you and they say, and they say, we really need you, Joe. Let me know if you ever got a call like this. I know you're reliable. Uh, <laughs> let me know. But they say, you know, we, you know, we're, you know, you're on your day off and they just call you and they say, we're slammed. You know, can you come in? We really need you on your day off. You know, you all the time, man. I've definitely gotten that call with yeah. pretty much almost yeah. every job I've had. Yeah, I have too, for the most for the most part. Uh, that's why I'm really interested in working for myself. <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> but you know, you respond to that question: Can they come in to your manager? And you 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 say, "Well, I really need my day off." In response to them asking you to come in, and you just hang up on them. You just hang up and, you know, in this scenario, you know, you're fighting for your time. Like you need your time and, you know, they're, you know, the, the business is trying to hold up things on there and their manager is trying to hold up things on there and as well. Uh, but, you know, in that situation, wonder what has been considered, you know, when you're having this discussion and you're mad about them interrupting, maybe the little free time that you do have to yourself in this situation, do you kind of think, like what type of manager you're working for. You know, there might be a manager that's like a master delegation who just likes to pawn work off so they can kind of kick back and chill. Or there's the type of manager that like they really need <laughs> your help. And it just, you know, it's their responsibility to call people that are off to see if they can come in and help out. You might have hung up on a manager that's petty and now they get it. They want to get even. So in return, <laughs> even though you're a good employee, you're dealing with the petty manager. So now they are they jack up your time even more and they give you undesirable shifts. Uh they have you doing stuff you really don't want to do. And that the one thing with time, what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to get to is that you know you have to consider when you work for somebody else and there's a situation with your time, and if you're trying to protect your time, or if you don't even understand the importance of protecting your time, that you have to think of the like the repercussions of going off on somebody who's essentially can, in control of your income and can make your situation. They have the they have the, the authority to make your situation a lot better, a lot worse than what it already is. So that's just one thing I think to think about. And the reason I say that is that, you know, you could have had that conversation with the supervisor and just told him I have plans. I can't get out of those plans. And that's it. Sorry. You know, they'll make it through. It's just going to be a bad day for a lot of people. Um, but the one thing about your time is that it's, like, it's your business, <laughs> what you do with your personal time. Like, if you plan on taking your one day off or your two days off to lay on the couch, watch TV, and eat snacks, that's your business. They don't need to know what you're doing on your day off. You can just say you have plans, and that's that's it. You know, you can keep it as short as that, but it's up to you to maybe create a little – 
space to where you don't divulge as much information as to what you do in your personal time, because that's your time and you don't have to share what you're doing in your personal time with your job. And that's part of just like protecting and placing it, prioritizing the, the time that you have for yourself. Uh, but Joe, do you have anything to add about that? Add on that? <laughs> I got something to say. It might be kind of funny though. <laughs> almost like a commercial ad. So <laughs> when I think of this, man, um, are you just not meeting the standards you may have for yourself? Is life just not cutting it for you right now? Guess what? You may have discovered what needs to be undiscovered. You've possibly been r- ransacked by a lot of what we call dummy missions. <laughs> <laughs> And that's okay. I mean, that's part of the process of what I explained (laughs) earlier. You have to go through dummy missions to appreciate the value of your time. Um, So when you deal with these uh, situations that, quote unquote, um, runs your uh, uh, your well of tranquility dry, um, I think it's very important that you try to hold on to or seek or find what's important to you because that's what's going to help you uh, eliminate the thing of wasting your time quote unquote it's not necessarily me promoting or giving you the green light or marcus giving you the green light to be on your worst behavior that's not what we're saying but this is a public service announcement for realigning of where your attention needs to be like literally it's like time to focus on what you can handle and control versus what is impossible If you don't see anything coming out of it, leave it alone. You know, I've wasted enough of my time. I don't regret it, but I've wasted enough of my time and so have you. So it's time to get right to it. And the only way you can do that is by coming to terms with everything that's going on. Yeah, that was a great PSA, Joe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it leads to a dummy missions, man. I remember. I, was, I mean, plenty. Joe, we've been on dummy missions together. Uh, yeah. So we know too many. Know about <laughs> that. But all right. So I would just give a lot of. I mean, I just I just have a lot of real life examples of running into issues with with time. So well, one well, of let's current, hear them, man. Yeah. Let's one of my current them. one of my current issues that annoys me quite a bit. Uh, I told Joe this before, but I work at a resort. I've mentioned this before. I work at a resort. And we have to park in the the area that I work in. We have to park in this parking lot that is walking distance 20 minutes away from where I have to actually report to work. So I have to take. So there's a shuttle that comes and gets us from the employee lot and it takes us into the resort and uh, to where I have to report to now. I have a lot of issues, a lot of issues with this Uh, because in the morning I have to wait like I'm on the property, but I have to wait and I'm not being paid while I'm waiting for the shuttle to show up. And at the end of the day, after I clock out, I have to wait for the shuttle to get back to come to pick me up, which sometimes I mean, I've waited 10, 15 minutes for this shuttle. And anybody who doesn't enjoy what they're doing, like when I leave this job, I'm ready to go. I clock out. I'm ready to leave. I'm not trying to hang out and wait for a ride to get out. Of the of the uh, of the complex, so you know, and if eventually, you know, I got to the point to where, you know, and this is the number like this is the number one issue I have with this job is that, and there's a lot of things I don't like about it too, but this is my number one issue is because I don't think they value my time, my like the time for one that I'm not paid for on the front end when I'm waiting for the shuttle to get into work and the shuttle that I have to wait for after I clock out to get to my car just so I can leave. So, I mean, that's an, it was just a major issue because I'm not, I'm not getting paid for this time. And it, it shows kind of a lack of respect for the time that I, you know, that I have for myself. So what I started doing is when I clock out, like I'm not trying to chase anybody down for them to give me a ride to the lot. I just started walking. You know, like I said, it takes me about 20 minutes. It takes me between 17 to 20 minutes to get to my car. The nice thing is that since this is all on kind of one, kind of on one enclosed property, I can walk to my car and not like nonstop because everything's connected. It's just a long walk. Uh, but 
But uh, one of the things I started to do was I told myself, well, if I'm going to wait, have to wait for a little bit in the morning, I can read or I can work on some things while I'm waiting. And then on the back end, if I decide to not wait for the shuttle because it's not there, then I'll just go ahead and start walking. And then I'll listen to my book or I'll start to maybe I'm preparing stuff for the podcast. Maybe I'm catching up on something. Maybe I have to read a few emails or make a few phone calls. So I turned that I've turned that time that I was that I was allowing uh, to be wasted because I'm taking responsibility for not utilizing that time, um, even though I disagree with me having to uh, have to walk to my car after working and all of that. Um, I took, you know, I looked at what I could control and I said, well, I'll just leave and I'll walk and then I'll take care of stuff. If somebody comes by and picks me up, if the shoulder runs by and they pass me or somebody I work with passes me and they give me a ride, that's great. But if not, I'm just going to walk and get stuff done. So now that I've started doing that, I've taken that dead time that I used to allow to frustrate me. And now I'm taking advantage of what is now time to work on stuff, listen to, you know, my, my books and do something productive instead of sitting there just stewing as I wait for this shuttle that may or may not come. Um, and that's I say. You just kind of have to find a way to uh, make the most out of those situations. If somebody is making you wait. Like I went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago and I was working on my show notes for the podcast. The doctor came in while I was sitting there. He just looked at me. He's just like, what are you doing? I said, I'm working. I was like, so if you're not going to come talk to me about these, <laughs> about uh, how I'm doing, then leave me alone. And, you know, I'll be here when you get back. But, but, uh, you know, it's about you taking, you know, taking control of that, of your time and, you know, not allowing so many things to get, in the way of what you what you need to do you know what i really appreciate you saying that because i'll demonstrate as far as like how i do time and it's uh you know we've known each other for some years now and the way you manage time still amazes me um i would say that um i manage my time similar but it's totally different like the, I'm the type of person where I have objectives or an agenda for the day. And my goal is to crush those things so I can have so much time to, you know, leisure time. So mm -hmm. I'm the type of person where I'm not going to wait if I have something to do immediately. So if I have something that's due the next day or even within a week, I'm crushing that first thing when I wake up. So I have that much time left later. So I'm the type of person also where I would, multitask. So not only am I working on that, I may be working on something else. So for example, I could be editing this podcast, right? And also doing planning for the next podcast and also doing something where I'm doing something work related. And I could be doing all of this even while I'm driving. And I'm not saying that I'm doing this and putting my life at risk in that manner. But what I'm saying is I'm processing everything while I'm driving. Sometimes I may write this down when I'm at a light or something like that, or I'm just processing all my head on how I'm really going to play it out. So that's kind of how I'm geared too, because I understand the value of time. And I, what I really understand is the unpredicted outcomes or scenarios that we live day to day. I know how my life is like I'm that one person where I'll wake up and I'll be like, hmm, I got this stuff to do. But realistically, I don't know what else I'm going to do for the rest of the day. So the reason why I always say that is because I honestly don't know. But two, I know something's coming. <laughs> There's never a day where you have an unpredicted situation that Something. happens. Something's always coming. Yes, something's always coming. So I always prepare for that. So if there's something I really want to get done or out the way, I will do that immediately just because I know there's always going to be something else left over that I didn't even take in consideration or somebody has uh, dumped onto me for mm -hmm. whatever circumstance. So this is kind of how I feel like people should be geared. But the only reason why I'm biased is because that's how I live my life. People don't have to live that way. And I actually encourage you not to, but I'm so geared and so used to thinking that way. I don't know nothing different. Yeah, Joe, there's a, uh, there's a theory with the term multitasking. It's that 
maybe you're not doing multiple things at once. Maybe you're just splitting. You're essentially doing a specific amount of a certain task for a short period of time. It's like you're kind so, of switching, you're switching gears at a very quickly. I see what you mean. So basically um, the theory is, if I hear you correctly, is me delegating my time in an efficient manner to actually uh, getting things done in, I guess, small increments or steps. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, but I know you can exercise and watch TV at the same time. You can definitely do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've so done that. You know, commercials do push ups, knock out some push ups, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Know, just at the gym, like if you're on the bike or something, if you're on a treadmill, you're watching TV. So you're, you can sometimes, but you Even know, better. It, yeah. I've, I've done that too. <laughs> All right, so Joe, you put that pretty well in that processing piece that you mentioned. I'm going to circle back to that, uh, okay, before we close out. So, Joe, was when you were younger, was going to the mall. Was this something that you look forward to doing? That you enjoyed doing? Is this pre car or after I got a car? Uh, pre car. Okay, I'm or, glad you said that because I was more excited going to the mall when I didn't have a car versus when I had a car. Okay. Good. All right. So I can remember going to the mall being younger and not like none of us, none of my friends, none of us wanted to go to the mall and it opened like right at nine. I think probably most malls were eight thirty, nine 9 o'clock. Nobody's there. There's nothing to look at. Yeah, nothing. To, just it's nothing there for what we were for, for what we were going for. Those things are not there. All right. <laughs> All right. So so so. Uh, but yeah, it was just something we did and we went late. We went later in the day because that's that's when people were going to be be there. It was just not cool to be early. Now, as I've gotten older and I look at going to the mall, like say I need to go to the mall. This isn't something I'm looking forward to doing. All right. So when you think about going to somewhere at a place, if you're actually going to the mall, I like say I was actually going to the mall to buy stuff, which is maybe half maybe half of the time I went there, I was actually going to buy something. Uh, but, but now if I go to a store, if I go shopping, like I'm that guy, like I'm that person that you see sitting in the parking lot before the store opens. Like I'm there like five, 10 minutes before sitting in the parking lot waiting for them to open the door. And because this, and because, I mean, we're discussing time, I'm going to explain why this is important is because say when you were younger, you went to the mall, it was congested. If you did want to buy something, you had to wait. If you needed help, you had to wait. If you're trying to get around the mall, you're walking around. Like, there's a lot of people there. Uh, so it's things to get around. There's obstacles out there. But, you know, when you go to the store, you go to these places early, there's less congestion. There's less time with their checkout. And there's better access to getting help if you need it. And the store is also less cluttered because they fronted the store the night before if they weren't like crazy busy. Uh, so everything's in order and hopefully that item you're looking for is there. Uh, so, and I did this the other day, I went to Target. I got to the, you know, I pulled up, pulled up to the store 10 minutes before they opened, sat there, caught up on some things. When the store opened, there was probably like five or six people sitting in the parking lot, just like me. Went in walked in got my stuff, got to the checkouts. Nobody at checkouts could go to any aisle I wanted <laughs> to check out. Uh, and I got I was out of the store maybe 15 minutes flat, maybe 10. My goal is to get out as soon as possible. But when you understand that, when you take that as an example, you tie that into someone who decides like, hey, I'm off of work today. or I don't have some of these responsibilities or obligations today, but I'm going to go to the store during the peak business hours. So now it's congested. There's a lot more people in the store. And you're probably your wait time to getting help, your wait time to checking out has doubled, if not tripled or quadrupled because of the time that you chose to go to the store. Probably the traffic getting in and out of this location, depending on where you live, might have uh, jumped as well, might have in increased significantly. So when you think about time, is it for me, it's like, is it more time, more efficient, efficient use of my time to go to the store? and sit in the parking lot 10 minutes before the store opens, then to go to the store during peak hours, spend 20 more minutes in the store that I wanted to, and then spend 10, 15 minutes at the checkout waiting 
and then leaving in congested traffic as well, depending on your area. So, you know, these are things to take into consideration. These are things that I take into consideration because I'm trying to maximize the time that I have available. Listen, man, you got to be super bored or you're just looking for some time to kill for you to even go through the busiest periods of anything. There's no other explanation of that unless you're like getting off of work or something you really need to get for whatever reasons. If you're just there and you know you can obviously get it at a whole different time, like a outside of rush hour or prime time, then you're simply not wasting your time, but you settled for less. And I'm not saying you settled for less as far as like you're a dummy, but you settled for less in the manner of you known you could have knocked this out of the way, but you chose to do this. So obviously you have other reasonings why you want to go during prime time, whether that's to look at uh, somebody, you know, see, see, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Like you go out there, you know, people watching, you know, you might see something you might like or something that might be funny or you just like the whole idea that you like congested crowds or more people around. Maybe it makes you feel more comfortable. Maybe you feel I don't know. You feel some type of great energy from that. I don't know. You get some type of gratification from that. But um, I would say I used to be like that. Uh, but now it's more so like what's my quickest e- exit? You know, I, I can't stand the long lines. I can't stand listening to the people that complain about everything. You know, it used to all be funny and entertaining to me, but once you, you know, you played that out and you've seen them scenario so many times, especially if you've worked a job in customer service and you already know how a conversation is going, you don't ever want to sit there and listen to it again because you know how much time you've wasted. <laughs> you, you'd be ready to get out of there quick once you know somebody's disgruntled. So if you were smart, you would. Uh, so, you know, I think at this point it's just personal preference and that's what I'm going to chalk it up as. But like I said, there's nothing better than actually uh, taking action on whatever you need to get done immediately versus later. Cause all it's doing is, um, holding up the airwaves for you. So there's going to be a lot more things that are just going to keep piling up, piling up, piling up, piling up, uh, until you unfortunately can't do that anymore. So I think it's very important for you to always be as productive as possible while you have that energy or that time, because there's going to be a time if Lord's willing, where you're not going to be able to be as fast or equipped to move through uh, at a comfortable pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one thing I just wanted to talk about like work, working and your time. All right. And everything that goes into that. And this will be, Oh, I'll kind of wrap with all this stuff, Joe. But I mean, you know, if you're someone who, you know, has a commute to work, uh, think about, you know, everything that goes into getting into your jobs. You might work a quote unquote 40 hour a week job. <clears throat> but this ties into, Joe, what you were saying about like processing information. Mm-hmm. And that's work. <laughs> that's that's work. And the work, say you work a 40 hour job and you're thinking about the work that it takes you to do to mentally prepare for that job. Yep. I mean, you might spend a couple, some people, you might spend a, a hour, a couple hours a night just, you know, figuring out what you're going to do the next day so you can make the most out of that time that you have or you're preparing for, you know, something and you're not being paid for it, you know, and then you have to, you think about all the time that goes into like getting to work. So like getting up, getting your clothes ready, taking a shower, uh, your commute time. I remember my commute was for one of the jobs I've had out here. I had to, it took me maybe like 10, 15 minutes to get to work in the morning. And sometimes in the evening when it's time for me to go home, it would take me 45 minutes to get home sometimes. So, so all that is connected, all that commute time. Uh, you know, if I'm spending an hour for work driving, I work eight hours and I'm driving for nine hours and I'm spending two hours hour or two at home figuring out what I'm going to do the next day. And that hour or two that I'm spending at home kind of sours, can sometimes sour the personal time that I have to myself. So you take that 40 hour job, you tax on five hours of commute time, 
maybe five or six hours of men mental preparation at home, you know, and that stuff just adds on and adds on. And, and then, and then that, sooner or later, you don't have time for yourself. Yeah, that 40 hour job, realistically, if you include the processing time and the commute time, that might be a 50, 60 hour a week job. Easy. Uh, and you're not even including kids. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something that, you know, you have to think about because all that time, it, it, you know, it lessens the quality. Like I said, it lessens the quality of your time, which probably lessens the quality of your life. So, you know, this is the, maybe the number one thing I can stress is that, you know, we, all of us, I mean, we must place a, must, must place a value in our personal time. I mean, depending on like your income situation or whatever purpose you're moving towards, like your personal time, uh, you know, the time that you haven't leased out to an employer or, you know, you leased out to other obligations, this time is the most valuable time that you have and you have to protect it and don't give it to just don't give it up to anybody because if you don't respect and value your time, then nobody else will. And that's all I have to say about that. Well said, man. Um, well, I think it's time to focus on yourself for your own advancement. That's what I got out of this conversation. And I feel like with that happening, what better way is to start writing down agendas. This is why people have a schedules. I don't like having hard set schedules for my personal time. It's definitely productive for other people, but I am kind of like a rebel because I'm so structured with my work and scheduling. I almost have to immediately be the opposite on my personal time, if that makes sense. It makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> it may not be written down, but I mean, my thought process is the same for both things. I can't even kid myself. You can't kid yourself either. Your thought process isn't going to change. It's going to be the same thing with work or your personal time, whether you believe it or not. Now, how you go about it, obviously, is two different things because you're not held accountable compared to work where you have to actually like, you know, you're getting paid, you know, you're actually theoretically on somebody else's time, but you're really still on your time. Like you have to answer to that. You have to be responsible for that. For when it's your time, you can do whatever you want, when you want, how you want it. And that's the thing that we want you to think about. How can I maximize that time so I can be greater at life? Absolutely. And I have a tool for that. I have the version 1.0 for that. Uh, I'll somehow include it with this video, but I'm working on something it's like 2.0 of a time inventory for folks. Uh, but yeah, you know, a lot of what Joe said, it just uh, maybe a little bit of what I said, <laughs> uh, you know, can be, can go a long way. Uh, but you know, you have to take intentional action to, you know, achieve the, the outcome that you desire. So that's all I have to say on that. And Joe, do you have anything? Time is very important. Don't ever think or don't ever regret, regret the time that you've wasted. Just know that if you acknowledged it, you're already ahead of the game. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge, Joe. I got it. <laughs> Once you acknowledge it, man, that's all. That's 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 the hidden secret. Once you acknowledge something, it's no longer a uh, no longer a mistake. You know, it's no longer you can regret. The only person you can blame is yourself, right? Yeah. All right. Well, it's another one in the books. <laughs> so, yeah, take care. Be safe. Later.